हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस द इंट्रोडक्शन टू कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्लास विल डिस्कस द रिमेनिंग कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म लाइक मोलैरिटी मोलैलिटी नॉर्मैलिटी एंड पी पी एम सो लेट स्टार्ट सी मोलैरिटी इज मोस्ट वाइडली यूज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म दैट मेक दिस पर्टिकुलर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल्सो सो वॉट इज मोलैरिटी मोलैरिटी इज नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सोल्यूट per unit volume of solution and volume must be represented in liter so actually we have to find number of mole of solute in 1 liter of solution so molarity will be number of mole of solute upon volume of solution number of mole of solute can be calculated by given weight of solute upon molar mass of solute and if volume is given in milliliter then we divide by 10 to the power 3 in order to convert it into liter so this particular expression will be our final expression for molarity and if volume is given in liter then we can directly use this particular expression now molarity is represented by capital m symbol and it is pronounced as molar which means suppose you enter to chemistry lab and you just pick a bottle of any chemical and 2 m is written over it then its concentration will be 2 molar since molarity is dependent on volume of the solution hence it is also dependent on temperature as we know that temperature dependency is always seen in volume case okay let's talk about some important molarity term which is most widely used in daily practices like 0.1 molar is commonly known as decimolar 0.5 molar is commonly known as semimolar so in most of the cases many questions are there which directly use this term decimolar and semimolar hence we need to have this idea that decimolar is actually 0.1 molar that is 1 by 10 molar and semi molar is 1 by 2 molar that is 0.5 molar okay now let's discuss the dilution law so what is dilution law see dilution law is basically molarity for mixers or for any dilution process and it is very simple law which it state that net number of moles of solute is conserved for any dilution process or for any mixing process in order to understand this let's take a container in which there is a solution whose molarity is m1 and volume is v1 now solvent is added to it and volume is increased to v2 and molarity is changed to m2 definitely final volume will be greater than initial volume now if we calculate the number of mole of solute initially so molarity into volume will give number of mole of solute because molarity is number of mole of solute upon volume hence molarity into volume will give number of mole of solute so m1 into v1 is number of mole of solute initially and finally m2 into v2 is the number of mole of solute now since we have only added solvent in this process and it we have not altered the amount of solute hence number number of 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 In this question, it is given that 585 gram of NaCl is dissolved in water to prepare 500 ml of solution. So we have to find its concentration in molarity. Okay, fine. So what is solute? Solute is NaCl. What is solvent? Solvent is water. So we need to find molarity, and molarity is this particular expression that is number of mole of solute upon volume of solution in liter. Number of mole of solute can be calculated by dividing given weight of solute upon molar mass. Given weight is 585. Molar mass of NaCl is 58.5. So number of mole is 10. Volume of solution was given that was 500 ml. After converting it into liter, it is 0.5 liter. So molarity is actually number of mole of solute upon volume that is 20 molar. Hence the molarity of this particular NaCl aqueous solution is 20 molar NaCl solution. Okay, so let's solve another question over molarity. it is actually based on dilution law which we have studied just now how much volume of 10 molar hcl should be diluted with water to prepare 2 liter of 5 molar hcl so actually we have initial state of hcl whose molarity is 10 molar volume is unknown that is let's assume it to be v liter and final molarity is 5 molar and final volume is 2 liter so this v liter volume is diluted to 2 liter hence v will be less than 2 liter now During this process, only solvent is added. Hence, we can use dilution law. That is, m1 v1 is equal to m2 v2. Number of mole of solute will be equal. M1 v1 is 10 v. M2 v2 is m5 into 2. So, final volume is 1 liter. So, initially it would be 1 liter, and finally it is diluted to 2 liter. Okay. 
Now let's discuss about some another important concentration term, and this one is molality. It sounds like molarity, but it is L. That is molality. In terms of molality, symbol has to be different. Hence, it is a small m, not capital M. It is a small m. Okay. So, what is molality and how it is different from molarity? Let's discuss this. Molality is number of mole of solute, which was also there in molarity, but it is with respect to weight of solvent. So, this is important term. In all previous concentration term, there was solution with respect to which we was actually we were actually finding the concentration term but here it is solvent so it is different from other it is different from other because it is with respect to solvent now molality is number of mole of solute upon weight of solvent number of mole can be written as given weight upon molar mass and weight of solvent must be kept in kilogram if it is in gram then we need to multiply with 10 to the power minus 3 in order to convert it into kilogram so final expression will be this it is pronounced in molal hence two small m will be two molal since there is no volume term hence it will not depend upon temperature okay let's solve a question a very good question on molality it was asked in j advance 2014 and it states that a compound with molecular formula h2x whose molar mass is 80 gram is dissolved in a solvent having density so density of solvent is given assume there is no change in volume on dissolution this is very important line in this question we have to find molality of 3.2 molar solution so see in this question molarity is given that is 3.2 molar that means 3.2 mole of h2x in 1 liter of solution we have to find a small m that is molality how to find this this will be number of mole of solute upon weight of solvent in kg number of mole of solute is 3.2 mole that we know if we anyhow calculate weight of solvent then we will definitely be able to solve this question now it is given in this question that there is no change in volume hence delta will be zero on dissolution hence we can say that volume of solution will be equal to volume of solvent that is one liter over here weight of solvent can be calculated with respect to density and the density into volume gives weight as we know the density is mass per unit volume so density into volume will give mass so weight can be calculated or mass can be calculated with density into volume density is 0.4 gram per ml volume is one liter in milliliter it is 10 to the power 3 so final 0.4 kilogram weight of solvent is calculated now let's put in this formula so molality is mole that is 3.2 weight 0.4 kilogram after dividing it is 8 molal h2x solution so it is very simple if we understand the question very well okay now let's develop an important relationship between molality and molarity and using this relationship many advanced level problem are easily solved see now it is given that for any solution molality is known molarity is known density of solution is known which is in gram per ml and molar mass of solute is also known capital m is here molarity and hence we can say that in one liter that is 10 to power 3 ml of solution m moles of solute would be there D multiplying it with density we can say that uh, this much weight of solution is present in m into m solute that much this much weight of solute so we have weight of solution and weight of solute we can find weight of solvent by subtracting the weight of solute with weight of solution the weight of solution is 10 to power 3 dou so we put over here and weight of solute is m into m solute so this particular expression is the weight of solvent in kilogram we have multiplied 10 to the power minus 3 to convert into kilogram now molality is number of mole of solute upon weight of solvent number of mole of solute was uh, m over here so we put m and we divide with this particular term so final expression is m into 10 to the power 3 divided by 10 power 3 into density of solution minus molarity into molar mass of solute so this expression is very very important to solve very good problems of je neat and okay so now let's derive another relationship which is very important relationship between molality and mole fraction see in this solution chapter there is more widely use of mole fraction and molality in regular interval which means that many colligative property mathematical calculation will be based on molality and mole fraction expression see there is an expression which is written over here that is molality is equal to mole fraction of solute upon mole fraction of solvent into 10 to the power 3 divided by molar mass of solvent 
so this is very important relationship let's check whether this particular expression actually represent molality or not see mole fraction can be written as number of mole of solute upon n total for solvent can be written as number of mole of solvent upon n total 10 to the power 3 will be in numerator and molar mass of solvent in denominator so 10 to the power 3 will be intact number of mole of solution that is n total will be cancelled out so the ratio will be n solute into 10 to the power 3 divided by weight of solvent because number of mole of solvent into molar mass will give weight of solvent so molality is actually number of mole of solute upon weight of solvent and that is actually true so this particular expression will work and this particular expression is very genuine we'll find the uses of this particular expression in later stages of this chapter but still take an example of this particular expression uses in question see the question given is mole fraction of I2 in benzene is 0.2 and density of solution is 1.2 gram per ml. We have to calculate small m that is molality and capital M that is molarity. Okay, fine. So mole fraction of I2 is 0.2. This will be solute and mole fraction of benzene which is more 0.8. This will be solvent. Molar mass of solvent that is benzene is 78. So we can directly use this particular expression to calculate molality. So putting the value we get 3.2 molal solution as our molality answer. Now we know molality and we know this expression we have derived in last slides. So using this particular expression only unknown term will be molarity. Solving this will get molarity that is 3.07 molar. So we have seen how we have to use this particular expression and how we have to interrelate the molality and molar. Okay, let's discuss another important concentration term that is also widely used that is called normality. And here there is a difference. Numerator is now number of gram equivalent of solute and denominator is same as in molarity that is volume of solution in liter. Now what is gram equivalent? Gram equivalent is given weight upon equivalent weight and equivalent weight is molar mass upon n factor. So finally the expression of normality converts to given weight upon molar mass of solute divided by volume of solution in liter into this n factor. And if we closely analyze this particular part, so this is molarity. So we can write normality is actually molarity into n factor. So we know what is molarity. If we are able to calculate n factor, then we will definitely be able to calculate normality. It is pronounced at normal. So 2n is too normal and it is dependent on temperature because molarity is dependent on temperature and volume term is there. Okay. So how to calculate n factor? Because if we are able to calculate n factor, then definitely we will be able to calculate the normality term. So n factor for acid and base are very simple. It is equal to number of replaceable H plus or OH minus ion. That means for HCl there will be only one H that will be ionized. So n factor is one, H2O so there will be two H. So n factor is two. NOH it is one, MgOH whole twice there will be two H minus. So it is two. H3BOT we know boric acid is an exception. It gives only one H plus in water. Hence it is n factor is one. H3PO4 n factor is three. H3PO3 there will be only two because one H will not be ionized. And H3PO2 it will be one. N factor for oxidizing or reducing agent will be calculated by this expression that is number of electron involved per mole of oxidizing agent or reducing agent in end redox reaction or you can calculate by this expression that is num change in oxidation state into number of atom. For example, here we have Cr2 O7 2 minus getting converted to Cr plus 3 through this reaction. So here Cr2 O7 2 minus is oxidizing agent. Here we have six electron use and n factor will be six. If do not, if we do not have this balanced reaction, then we can use the second part that is change in oxidation state into number of atom. Change in oxidation state is plus six two plus three, so it is three, and number of atom is two, so three into two will be six. So n factor will be six. In case of salts, you have to just count total positive or total negative charge over cation or anion. For example, AlCl three. Al plus 3, MgCl2, Mg plus 2, n factor is 3 for LCl3, 2 for MgCl2. Now after knowing all these values and knowing all these concepts, let's solve some good question over normality. It is given that if 0.4 gram of NOH is present 40 ml of solution, then we have to find molarity and normality. For molarity, we need number of mole of solute upon volume of solution in liter. Now volume of solution in liter can be calculated because ml is given, so we can convert it into liter by multiplying into 10 to the power minus 3. Number of mole can be calculated by dividing this particular value with molar mass. So finally, the answer is 0.25 molar. Now we know that n factor of NOH1 because it gives 1 OH minus per mole of NOH. Hence normality, we can use this expression that is normality is equal to molarity into n factor. So finally, normality is also 0.25 normal. 
सेकेंड क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू फाइंड वेट ऑफ एस टू एस फोर इन वन फिफ्टी एम एल ऑफ एन बाई सेवन एस टू एस फोर सो नॉर्मैलिटी इज एन इक्वेलेंट अपॉन वॉल्यूम विच इज वेट अपॉन इक्वेलेंट वेट ऑफ सोल्यूट इन डिवाइड बाई वॉल्यूम एंड रियरेंजिंग दिस एक्सप्रेशन वी कैन गेट वेट इज नॉर्मैलिटी इन टू इक्वेलेंट वेट इन टू वॉल्यूम सो नॉर्मैलिटी इज गिवन वॉल्यूम इज गिवन वी नीड टू फाइंड इक्वेलेंट वेट इक्वेलेंट वेट कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड बाई मोलैरिटी मोलर मास अपॉन एन फैक्टर मोलर मास ऑफ स्टोर फोर इज नाइनटी एट एन फैक्टर इज टू बिकॉज इट हैज टू एच इन दिस सो इक्वल इन विट इज फोर्टी नाइन पुटिंग दिस वैल्यू वी कैन गेट वन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव ग्राम ऑफ वेट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन ओके अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन टर्म इज पी पी एम पार्ट्स पर मिलियन सो सी वेन वी आर नॉट एबल टू यूज परसेंटेज देन वी यूज पी पी एम बिकॉज सॉल्यूट अमाउंट विल यू वेरी लेस इन दैट केस For example, recently Maggie was was banned because of extra lead content, and that was represented in terms of ppm. So, if you have very less solute, that is very small to be represented out of hundred, then we use parts per million, that is out of ten to the power six. So, it is nothing but simple ratio of weight of solute upon weight of solution with respect to ten to the power six. If we we can calculate in terms of weight by volume also, so it will be ratio of weight upon volume. mole by mole also then it will be ratio of mole of solute upon mole of solution into 10 to the power 6 here 10 to the power 6 is important which is equal to 1 million now let's solve a question calculate molarity of 200 ppm of cso3 aqueous solution 200 ppm means what 200 g of cso3 in 10 to the power 6 g of solution since the amount of solute is very less hence we can write weight of solute and weight of solvent and weight of solution is equal and we can also write volume of solution and volume of solvent is also equal now weight of solution can be written as 10 to the power 6 g which is also equal to weight of solvent and since the vol density of water is 1 g per ml hence we can convert it, it to get the volume of solvent that is equal to volume of solution that will be 10 to the power 6 ml or 10 to the power 3 liter so putting the value we get 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar as our final answer so this conclude the concentration term part in next part we'll discuss the solubility and other part of this chapter thank you thanks for watching please like share and subscribe for further updates